Alrighty, we've got some Kef's uh, X300A <coughs> monitor speakers here. We've got a left and a right. And uh, basically the customer was complaining that, yeah, well, it wasn't really getting any audio from these guys anymore. And it um, didn't matter whether he hooked up just a, a normal 3.5 millimeter uh, headphone jack type plug into the back of the aux here. Or he went and uh, plugged from the computer right into the USB because these have a DAC that are all um, built inside of here. So they're, uh, they're pretty good speakers. You know, they've got uh, aluminum, magnesium type chassis for the speakers here. Um, but yeah, anyways, um, so the complaint is nothing's going on. Get these guys in here and plug them in. Verify nothing is going on. And I can hear these things. So there is a um, patch cable together. And it's they use USB, which is, I just think is something strange that they did but hey they use cheap parts to do it and there's the old um, mini not the micro and they connect together and these will allow them to talk to each other and transfer audio but anyways there's some built-in circuitry that uh, will turn these guys on and off from standby and channel switching and stuff like that and I can hear them clicking and clacking and your main speaker which is going to be the left speaker has a indication light in the front it would be right up in here on your main speaker. The right speaker does not have an indication light. So um, they'll turn green, they'll turn red on and off, and then they just keep clitter clacking. A lot of that weird stuff when you come into this is uh, usually going to be surrounded by a power supply issue because there's spikes of voltage or not a proper voltage and uh, a lot of noise in there, that weird stuff will happen. So usually you get the weird stuff like this, first thing you need to do is pull it out, do a visual inspection. And uh, that's what we did. We went ahead and pulled this guy apart. And um, you've got a bunch of different connections, but you pull off your back, be gentle, take everything, just connect as much as you can. <clears throat> and let's move him out of the way for a minute here. The power supply is mounted, I think, in the worst fashion they could possibly have thought of. And it's held in with your squeeze little clips. And now these guys are so hard to get to that uh, you do have to take out the front speaker to get to because there's two in the back and two in the front and there is not a lot of room. But anyways, to get your speaker out and all that stuff and um, you didn't, you don't have to pull this out to realize what is actually going on, but this one's already out. We've got some parts on order. Let's go ahead and take a look. Can we see the bulgingness? There's some C cups on these things. So, yep, common uh, occurrence when you get these um, power supplies, and specifically stuff like this. So, we got uh, some caps on order. I, I just went ahead and pinned pinned it up real quick, and man, it was just absolutely terribly noisy, um, garbly crap coming out of this thing. So, there is a toroidal transformer in these. So, you know these um. Yeah, these have some stuff to go in here, but they are still using a switching power supply built in and uh, to modify the voltage here. So, yeah, um, we'll see. We'll see what happens here. But, yeah, the main main power off of this guy is, um, you know, up over here. And if we see, let's see if it tells us here a couple voltages. Well, let's see. Maybe the back side. So plus 10 volts I see there. We get a 3.3 volts, a negative 15 volts, and a positive 15 volts. So our negative and positive, uh, is it really only going to be 15 volts on our, uh, on our actual um, power uh, transistors? Hmm, possibly. But they're getting the other voltages up over here with this uh, this guy. So, yep, that is what is looking like going on. Um, if this was a full, let's see, we can uh, pinpoint this a couple things here. Um, so transformer in, follow him across. He is going through this smaller relay, going through a the temperature coefficient resistor here, popping out and around, going through a little 
itty bitty little uh, rectifier. Goes on through, blah, blah, blah. Then we have our other transformer input here. And the output to our actual power amp board. Which connects right here on this top left side. Or I guess it would be the middle up from our view right now. And uh, yeah, there's... Eh. Do I see the the price point of this thing and the quality that uh, of components put in here? Eh, is what it is. All this stuff is expensive because it's low count. But yeah, don't see anything else immediately that pops out. And different color of a. Uh, uh, looks like we have this cap here as well it is a little bit bulging if we can take a peek and see that if you want to focus I'm trying to do this with only the multiple hands i have there we go so there's a 470 mic 10 volt i definitely have those so we'll have to get those replaced it almost looks like there is some discoloration to this board there. I don't know if you can see that. And that might be from that small surface mount package transistor. I'm not 100% on this. No uh, no real schematic to find. And that's basically where we're going to have to start with this guy. Is get the power supply acting right. Because he ain't, uh, he ain't acting right with us. So basically, um, what you see on this board is kind of mirrored to that side over there. Negative this stuff. Okay. All that stuff is going to be most likely shared in between that patch cable between the two. Um, but uh, yeah, the only thing that is really happening compared to this guy is um, we're, we're missing, missing just a couple components over here. Anyways, um, the comp let's see, the ratings for these are 220 mics, 50 volts, and we have a 220 at uh, 16 volt. You know, if you get in the right package, you can delete, you know, some of your part count here and just get your 50 volts uh, all the way around here. But unfortunately, it, you kind of come into a space thing here, so um, just replacing with the exact same voltage uh, rating and uh, a little bit longer life. These are 105 degree um, C specs on here, so at least that's a good thing. So make sure you put the right temperature specs in this guy. We're putting in uh, 2,000 hour 105 uh, Nichi Cons that are on order, uh, specifically made for you know low ESR and um, you know decent serviceability life. So um, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get that uh, ordered up here, and uh, we'll go ahead and we'll pop the video and show you this thing working correctly. But yeah, this is not um, this is not fun getting the actual power supply board out. Uh, I did have to cut the one back tab, and uh, not a big deal. Um, but uh, it just one of the pins are off the side, so you just open it a little bit back up, and it will hold it down just fine. But yeah, what what an asinine like thing to do. Like it was almost like it was an afterthought to me. But anyways. It is what it is sometimes. You know, it, all they could have done is the same thing like they did on the bottom here with the transformer with their your four screws is give me some screw mounts right on the bottom. But no, what's easier and cheaper is these plastic shits and you just drill a hole, pop them in, and squeeze everything down. So anyways, that's what's going on here. We'll uh, get these parts going and uh, we will be back with the next part of this.